Hey there, heavy metal maniacs. Welcome to another episode of Album of the Week here on Iron Horde channel. As you will probably know by now, every week, every Wednesday, I grab an album from my collection and uh, say a couple of words about it, what I like and maybe, if any, what I don't like about that particular album. Last week I reviewed a relatively new album which was released last year. This time round I'm going way back to 1983 in Arizona, in the United States of America, reviewing an album which isn't exactly considered as a heavy metal album, but this album, even though it isn't, heavy metal has made quite some strides in recent years within the heavy metal underground scene. It's an album uh, which I really love, one of my favorite albums ever. I think it deserves an episode to describe the greatness of this record. So sit tight and let's see why this hard rock record with folk touches has touched the hearts of so many metalhead. Let's go. <laughs> Thanks for joining us again for this video. What we do here is review albums such as Ben's review festivals, speak and discuss cultural aspects of heavy metal. So if this is of interest to you, please consider subscribing and sharing and liking this video on social media with your friends and wherever possible forums also in a way to reach more metalheads uh, as much as possible. So the album I chose for you this week, as I said, is from a band named Ashbury. The album is Endless Skies, released in 1983 with Ashbury Music. As far as I know, Ashbury Music was a name put forward uh, by, by the band themselves in order to release this album and basically have a label name rather than being listed as self-released or independent. And The Skies was the debut album of uh, Ashbury, released in 1983, as I said. The band is essentially a duo featuring Rob and Randy Davis, who are brothers, and was formed around the late years of the 1970s. The band has an unusual sound, kind of capturing the spirit of southern rock, hard rock as well, with some folk touches, some psychedelic to a certain extent. Think about uh, kind of um, Leonard Skinner meets Uriah Heep with uh, some touches of early Black Sabbath and even parts in specific tracks leaning towards a more epic sound. This is not a constant throughout their music, but there are parts in certain tracks which, yes, I can see the influence of epic tales, even the lyrics, which fit with the music by Ashbury. And in fact, this album uh, would have been uh, perfect if it would have been released in 1973 and not a decade later. The thick grooves, the uh, spacey solos, the Moog action, and not to mention the band's appearance, would have been a natural uh, thing uh, during the early years of the 1970s, years which gave us a lot of proto-metal bands like Hard Stuff, Iron Butterfly, Atomic Rooster, Captain Beyond. And in fact, stay tuned because in the following weeks I will be doing a video of what I think are the essential albums from this period of time, albums which influenced later bands which were categorized as heavy metal. So essential albums basically from proto-metal bands. But in the 80s, obviously, that kind of sound was not so popular, um, apart from some regional success for the band. In a period of time where the new wave of British heavy metal and heavy metal in general was on the rise, this music might have sounded a bit out of place. So no wonder they didn't have the success 
that this album really merits. This album is a great all-round package. I mean, uh, check out that cover art, beautiful, kind of a, an, an old man, a wizard, a sorcerer, heeding some call, and the village down below. Very epic, really fits with the music, the lyrics. In fact, on the first track, kind of the lyrics really depict what is what is going on in this cover art. In fact, if I may read uh, some of the lyrics from the first track, which go something like this. He looks to be a wizard or perhaps a magic man, with eyes of his with fire, all the stuff with his hands. And he rides about the mountains with the secret that he holds. For the time has come, the people must be told. Whilst I'm reading that, I can almost sing that because it's so, so ingrained in myself and the lyrics make me almost sing that part. But anyway, you can really start to understand the feeling that this album really encapsulates from the very first notes. And the great thing about this album is the emotions that it holds and that it transmits to the listener. I mean, it's filled with acoustic parts, with guitar solos, with piano parts, with that smooth uh, voice. Kind of a peaceful album, yet it's still a hard rock record because there are parts which are really aggressive, like on the track Vengeance, for example. But all in all, this album is based on the acoustic parts. In fact, there's a great melody on Take Your Love Away, the great acoustics on Hard Fight and uh, the track Mad Men. And also there's a great guitar solo on the track Mystery Man. But the masterpiece on this record is undoubtedly the title track, which is the last track on this record, and Les Skies. It starts really slow with, again, those acoustic parts and with sounds in the background of wind and uh, chimes. And then the guitar kicks in. It all flows so smoothly. This is a masterpiece here from start to finish. No wonder that a lot of metalheads, which in general can understand and feel that kind of uh, connection with the bands, even the live ritual. In heavy metal, it's different than from other, from other scenes. There's more connection with the band and this kind of music really connects you in a different way than the heavier heavy metal, but still the end result is, is very similar and touching and that kind that you want to listen over and over again. As I said, uh, popular or not, this album uh, has it all. Ashbury as a band deserve to have the recognition at least of something that was released a long time ago, which didn't have that much of a success. But nowadays this album is being pressed on a number of occasions because people are understanding the greatness of this record. It isn't an album that will have that wide of an appeal, but fans of uh, late 60s, early 70s, psychedelic rock should really check out this album and I'm sure that you will love it because it is that great and you will start to love it from the first notes of the very first track you understand the greatness of this record so that is all i have for you for today another great record check out the links in my description uh, links affiliate links which you can click on to buy the album we get a small commission to no extra expense for you write in our uh, comments what you like about this record what you don't like um, other records which are similar to this, I have a couple in mind, maybe I can include them in future Album of the Week episodes, but anyways, that is all I have, stay safe and metal on. Cheers!